This video will be reviewing the paramecium homeostasis gizmo that we were doing. So basically to start, I drew out a little happy potato or paramecium in water. And I drew in his contractile vacuole as well. And this contractile vacuole is so important because it is responsible for osmoregulation. And with this, we just have to remember that osmo means water. In that last question of the gizmo, it asks you to talk about paramecia in salt water versus paramecia in fresh water. When we talk about salt, we're also talking about solute concentration. When we talked about the properties of water, we said that water is a universal solvent. So a solvent is what dissolves the solute. In this case of the gizmo, our solute was salt. So I'll make a little sketch of seawater where we have a very high solute concentration. To contrast, fresh water has a very low solute concentration. So I only have two molecules of solute in there. Our paramecium friend is somewhere in the middle. So there's a moderate solute concentration for him. And once again, to remind you, when we're talking about solute concentration, we're talking about salt. So water molecules will move so that the concentration of solute inside versus outside is in equilibrium, meaning that water will move so that we get equal concentrations of salt on either side. So if we're drawing this out, I'm going to draw the paramecium's membrane here. And then on the outside, I'm going to draw a bunch of salt molecules. And on the inside, I'm just going to draw one. It might be easy to think that each of these salts have one water molecule. If you have more salt, then you have more water. But that's not the case. What's really happening in here is that water is leaving the paramecium when there's a higher salt concentration outside. This happens because of those hydration shells we studied. Hydration shells are created by water molecules surrounding a salt. The oxygen of a water molecule has a negative dipole and is attracted to the slight positive charge of the sodium molecule. The hydrogens in the water have a positive dipole, so they're attracted to the slight negative charge that the chlorine brings. When you have these interactions, you end up with what we call a hydration shell, which I will highlight around each of the ions here water molecules that are involved in hydration shells, we're going to call them occupied. They're not going to count in our water concentration across the membrane. So going back to that original picture with our paramecium's membrane, we're going to circle all of the water molecules that are not considered free because they are involved in making hydration shells. Outside, because we have more salt, all those water molecules are occupied. Inside, there's less salt. So some of those water molecules are free. These are the water molecules that count when we are establishing equilibrium of water across the membrane. So if we start with zero water molecules that are free outside and four that are free inside, what's going to happen is that two of these are going to diffuse across the membrane to establish an equilibrium of free water molecules. So if you have more salt, like a salt water environment, there's less water that is quote unquote free or freely available to move across the membrane because it's making a hydration shell around the salt. If you have less salt compared to the environment, you have more water molecules that are free. Those water molecules are going to perform osmosis and diffuse across the membrane down their concentration gradient. This is why paramecia in saltwater environments 
don't need a contractile vacuole. Water is already moving outside of the paramecia, and they don't need any help to do that. For a paramecium in freshwater, however, it's a very different story. Freshwater is not going to have as much salt outside of the paramecium. In fact, the paramecium is actually going to have a higher salt concentration than the water environment. So a lot of water molecules within the paramecium are going to be occupied, meaning that they're involved in making the hydration shells. In the freshwater environment, outside the paramecium, there's going to be a lot more free water molecules. Remember, these are the ones that count when we're looking for osmosis. As a result, these water molecules on the outside are going to go down their concentration gradient, flowing into the paramecium. This will make the paramecium unhappy, but luckily, we have contractile vacuoles coming to the rescue. Molecules of water will go into that contractile vacuole. This alone won't save the paramecia from bursting. So what happens next? As the contractile vacuoles fill with water, they get closer and closer to the paramecium's membrane. When they make contact with the membrane, they're able to expel or push that water outside the paramecium. This mechanism enables those contractile vacuoles to regulate the amount of free water inside the paramecium. This helps it to avoid swelling up to a point where it's going to burst. And this is called osmoregulation.